Hello, uh, welcome to a very quick little mini tutorial. Um, this shawl, which at the time of filming this, it hasn't actually got a name. Um, so I'll just refer to it as the shawl. Um, I'm just getting to where I'm going to knit on the edging. So this, instead of casting off the stitches, this shawl is going to have a knitted on edging. So it's worked from the top down. There are a lot of stitches at the end, so it's a little bit difficult to see, but let's see if I can just spread it out. So it starts here, and then it's worked downwards. And then at the end, you end up with 521 stitches, I think it is. Yes, 521 stitches on the long circular needle. And instead of casting those stitches off, we're going to knit the edging on sideways into it. So we're going to start at the beginning of the row. So I've been knitting in blue and grey. So the last two rows was in grey and the two rows before that was in blue. So the edging is going to be uh, in blue. So what I've done is after the last two rows of blue, I didn't break the yarn, but I did break the grey yarn because I'm not going to use that again. So let me just find the right end. So I'm now going to use the blue yarn. So I'm just carrying it up the side from the two rows below. I actually joined in the blue yarn there because I hadn't used it for a while. So I joined it in, worked two rows in blue, two rows in grey, and now I'm going to just carry on using that same blue yarn. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start cast on um, six stitches at the beginning of the needle to actually um, allow for the stitches that we're going to use for the edging. So um, you can use a very, various different cast-ons. I recommend the cable cast-on, which is what I'm going to show you. You can also use the knitted cast-on or the knitted cast-on or the backward loop cast-on. But I recommend the cable cast-on. There may be other cast-ons you can use. Um, I don't know all of them, so I don't know. But any cast-on where you can cast some stitches on in front of existing stitches is fine. So the cable cast-on, you go in between the first two stitches now notice I'm not going into the first stitch, that's the knitted cast on, which you can do. I'm going in between the first and the second stitch, just needle straight through to the back. Now remember I knit continental, so if you knit English, that's fine. Just wrap the yarn around the needle, just like you would do if you were knitting a stitch. Then make sure that stitch, that grey stitch stays on that needle and put the new stitch on that needle and I always twist it. So instead of putting it on like that, I take the needle so that the two needle tips are facing together. Take it out. Now, if you tighten that new stitch, it can be sometimes be a bit difficult to get your needle in. So what I tend to do is leave that stitch loose, put my needle in after that new first stitch, then tighten the yarn, wrap the yarn around, knit up a new stitch, and then put that on. So instead of putting the needle in so that my tips are going towards each other, I'm putting the needle in so the tips are pointing in the same direction. So I'm twisting that new stitch as, as I put it on. I leave it a little bit loose, put my needle in after the first stitch, then tighten it. Wrap the yarn around, knit up a new stitch. Needle in, tighten it, knit up a new stitch. And we're going to do six. Let's just see how many I've done. So I have done one, hang on, one, one. Two, I've done three. One, two, three, four. Okay, so if that last stitch, like now I pull that last stitch too tight and it's a bit difficult to get in, so just loosen that last stitch. Put your needle in between the first and second stitch. It's always a new first and second stitch. Wrap the yarn around, pull it up, pull up a new stitch, needle in, tighten it, wrap the yarn around, and knit up a new stitch. So that's six stitches. Now on the pattern, on this particular pattern, um, the, you actually start with a setup row and that's because the pattern repeat for the uh, edging is 10 rows. So the edging has 10 rows. Every right side row I'm going to knit one stitch on the edging together with one of these live grey stitches. That means that I need a number that can be divided by 5 because I have 5 joining rows. Um, and I ended up with 521 stitches, which leaves me one stitch left over. So I'm going to do just a plain setup row uh, to get rid of that first stitch. So the first row is just knit five. So sometimes the first stitch can be a little bit difficult to get into um, when you use this cast on, I think, anyway. Uh, but I don't use this cast on very often. So, um, right, so two, four, five. So the good thing with this is because the edging is in a different colour than the than the last row of the shawl, I can easily see 
um, which show, stitch is on the edging and which is on the shawl. So the blue one is the last stitch of the edging and the um, grey one is one stitch from the shawl. So I'm going to knit five and then I'm going to do a single join and the abbreviation I use for single join is SJ. Now you're going to knit those two together. You can do knit two together or knit two together through the back loop. I tend to prefer knit two together. Try them and see which one you prefer. So I'm going to just go in and knit those two together. So I've now attached those six edging stitches to the main shawl. Then I'm going to turn and I'm going to slip the first stitch purlwise for the yarn in front. So I take doing a con I'll, I'll do continental first and I'll do an English on the next row. So continental, I take the needle under my working yarn into the stitch purlwise. So you can see the working yarn goes across here. Then I take the stitch off and then I just take the needle and sort of lift it under the working yarn. So the working yarn goes to the back. Then I'm going to knit five. So I've still got six stitches in total for the edging. Okay, so now I'm actually going to start on the um, chart itself. So the first stitch on the chart is a slip one. So if I do that the English way this time, so to slip the first stitch, you're going to hold the yarn at the front of that right needle. Now, please note, I'm not an English style knitter, so I'm not very good at this. But make sure you hold the working yarn in front of your needle. Put the needle in purlwise, and then you're going to take the yarn between the needles to the back. It's really important that you actually take it between the needles to the back. And then I'm going to knit one, knit two together, yarn over, knit one, and then I'm going to do a single join. So I'm going to knit the last stitch of the edging and the next stitch of the main shawl together. So that's another row that we've attached. Turn and slip on and I'm going to um, knit two together. There we go. Struggled a bit with that one for some reason. Yarn over, knit three. Now please note uh, on the chart for this, the uh, on right side rows knit stitch is a plain white square and on the wrong side rows it's a solid dot. So do check your chart key. So row three, slip one, pull wise with the yarn in front, knit one, knit two together. Now you can see when I knit two together it's the, it's a regular stitch and then there's a yarn over from the previous row. Can you see that? And that creates the ladder, ladder stitch or um, faggoting stitch as it's called. Knit one and then I'm going to knit that last stitch with one stitch from the edging. So just like a normal knit two together. Now if you were doing a shawl where the edging and the main shawl was in the same colour and you struggled to see when you got to the end of the edging or you were worried about missing it, you can always put a marker here so you know when you get to the marker or one stitch before the marker rather you'd have to stop and take the marker off and then knit two together. If that sounds confusing just ignore it. You don't need it on this one because you've got two different colours. So slip on and then I'm going to knit two together. So again the knit two together is one knit stitch and then one um, yarn over from the previous row that I'm knitting together. Yarn over, knit three. So I'm going to actually work through the whole edging for you. Um, so just bear with me. There will be some more happening soon. So row five, we're going to slip one, pearlwise with the yarn in front, nip one, and then we're going to do three yarn overs. So continental is one, two, three. English style, it is one, two, three. So you go around, let me show you that again. So you go to the front for one yarn over and then to the back between the needles and to the front again for two and then three. So you get the yarn wrapped three times around your needle. So continental again, one yarn over and then you just lift it over again. So it goes three times and it goes from front to back. Uh, and then we're going to do knit two together. If you struggle to do the knit two together, I tend to quite often grab the stitch below with my thumb and my index finger so I can pull it down a bit and that makes it a little bit easier to um, knit those two together. Yarn over, knit one and then we're going to knit two together. Okay, so let's turn and do row six. 
So row six is slip on, pearl eyes with the yarn in front, knit two together, oh, hang on, knit two together, yarn over, knit one, and then we got those three yarn overs. Okay. So the first one we're going to knit through the back loop. Now you can't knit all those three as normal. It won't work. So you have to do at least every other one through the back loop. Or if you have a double yarn over, you would do one normal and one through the back loop. So what I'm going to do, because we've got three, I'm going to do the first one through the back loop. Second one normal. And the third one through the back loop. Then I'm going to knit the last two. And row seven. Slip one, knit one. And then I'm going to the middle stitch of those three yarn overs. Can you see that how that looks a bit kind of open? Can you see that? You see how it looks a bit open. So I'm going to actually knit that one through the back loop. So that I only need to do it on the sing on the middle one because it just makes it close up a bit more and look a bit neater. Um, and then knit two together, yarn over, knit one, hang on. And then knit two together. Okay, I'm going to do a couple more rows to show you how this, uh, show you the Russian cast off as well. So row eight, slip one, knit two, knit two together, yarn over, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so when we cast, when we did those three yarn overs, we didn't do any decreases, so we cast on three stitches. So we got, now should have nine stitches. Two, four, six, eight, nine. So you can see we now had nine stitches and we got that big yarn over there. I'm poking my finger through. So now on row nine, we're going to cast up those three extra stitches that we increased. Uh, let me just try and get this yarn untangled from my shawl. So the first one, we're going to knit two, so just knit two as normal, knit two, and then I'm going to put my left needle into the front of those two stitches from the left, so my right needle sort of is in the back where it would normally be if I was going to knit it, and then knit those two together. Let me show you how to do that again. So knit two, so they're on that right hand needle, put your left needle into the front of those two stitches and knit them together. And then we end up with one stitch on our right hand needle. So we knit the next one. Now you can also, if you want to, slip them back onto the left needle and then knit them through the back loop. But if you look carefully at what I did, I did the same thing as I did the first time, except I missed that one step. So if you knit the next one, so never have more than two stitches on your needle, and then put your left needle into the front of those two stitches, and that's the same as having the stitches on your left hand needle, and then knitting them through the back loop with the right hand needle. So that's the three stitches we've cast off, and that leaves us with one stitch on the needle, which is the uh, X on your chart. I marked that stitch with an X, because um, I need to just put a placeholder in place so you know when you finish casting off, you will have one stitch on your right hand needle. So that X you can just ignore, because that's that stitch. And then we're going to knit one, knit two together, Oops, and I dropped the stitch there. That's not very good to do when I'm filming. So let me just quickly rescue that stitch. There we go. Yarn over, knit one, knit two together. And then let me do row 10 as well. And then I've completed the first um, I've completed the two set of rows and the first ten rows of the chart. So all the wrong set of rows are the same. You slip the first one, knit two together, yarn over it, and then you just knit to the end. Apart from row six, where you have the do three double yarn overs. So let me just see if I can show you what that looks like. So that's what that looks like. Okay. So we've got the hole here for the yarn over, we've got the um, ladder here, or the faggoting stitch here, and then we got, here you can see how it's attached to each stitch along here. Can you see that? Okay, 
So you just carry on repeating those 10 rows till you've used up all these 221. Um, yes, 221 stitches. So we've used up the first six of them. So we've got 215 to go. So yes, it's quite a lot, quite a few rows and they're very short. Um, but it saves you casting off all of those. And it does give a very nice edging. Okay, if you have any questions, leave a comment below this video or send me a message, uh, send me an email. And I'd be happy to help. Thank you very much for watching.